I understand that you have been tracking this disease in Maine for the past few years. Uh, why is it uh, getting some attention now? Yeah, so US CDC did uh, a report that looked at many years of data, so eight years of data, looking back to when we had our first earliest cases of babesiosis in Maine all the way through to now. Um, so when you look at it in that time frame, uh, we can see that numbers that appear to be shocking when you look at it over that time frame. However, from Maine CDC's perspective, we've been seeing this increase happen year after year after year. And we've actually considered babesiosis to be endemic in Maine for several years based on that increase. And we've been taking actions because of that. And how does uh, babesiosis uh, compare to something people are already familiar with, Lyme disease? Yeah, so babesiosis is spread by the same tick that spreads Lyme disease in Maine. Um, because it this germ or this pathogen tends to come in to the tick population a little bit after Lyme disease, Lyme disease has had a lot longer uh, time to spread um, and gain traction. Um, so we see we tend to see fewer cases of babesiosis uh, in Maine than we do Lyme disease, but since it is spread by the same tick, there's the potential that it could be seen um, anywhere in Maine that that tick uh, is found, which these days is in any county in Maine. And what should people be aware of? It, take the same precautions you would with Lyme disease? Is Absolutely. Uh, the best way to prevent babesiosis, just like Lyme disease, is to prevent getting bitten by a deer tick. Uh, so the best things that you can do is first, know when you're going into tick habitat um, so that you can take those proper precautions. Next, we want people to wear protective clothing, and that can be as simple as wearing long sleeves and long pants. Um, we also recommend that people tuck their pants into their or tuck their pants into their socks. Um, it's not the coolest look when you're out in the forest, but it will prevent ticks from being able to get onto your skin. Um, and really, that's the main goal. Uh, we also recommend that people wear EPA-approved repellents so that those ticks think that you taste bad um, and want to stay away from you. Um, and then we recommend that people do frequent tick checks while they're out in tick habitat and then a really good one when they come home. Um, you want to remove those ticks as quickly as possible. And if you do get bitten, what should you do? Yeah, first thing, don't panic. Um, we know that it does take some time, anywhere from 15 minutes to several days for a germ to pass from a tick into you. And that depends on which of our tick-borne diseases you're talking about. But the most important thing to remember is we wanna remove those ticks as quickly as possible. And the best way to do that is either with some fine point tweezers or with a tick spoon so that you can just pull that tick right off. There are a lot of other methods that you may see on social media or on the internet, like using petroleum jelly or nail polish or nail polish remover uh, to remove a tick. But the fact is those methods just take too long uh, to get the tick off. And the best thing that you can do is just pull that tick right off. Perfect. Um, I'm itching now just thinking about ticks, but <laughs> um, anything else you'd like to add? You're the expert. Absolutely. Um, I just want to reiterate to everyone that the most important thing, regardless of what tick-borne disease we're talking about, Lyme disease, babesiosis, any of them, is that you can prevent getting them by preventing tick bites in the first place. Um, and it's really important, especially since there's the chance that we might still get snow to remember this. Uh, deer ticks can be active anytime the temperature is above zero. Um, just because there's snow on the ground does not mean that ticks are dormant. So we need to take precautions all year round, not just when the weather's nice.